let's speak globally. Let us first state very clearly that when it comes to mathematical influence and reputation and impact and strength, America is the number one country in the world. I mean, the United States of America is number one in the world, and France is number two. And it's a clear number one, and it's a clear number two. Let's also say that these are very different systems and situations in America and in France. In France, we have a big problem with money. Our best universities are nearly bankrupt. Uh, and uh, in terms of means, of uh, salaries, everything is really downsized compared to the United States. The United States still has this system with this huge universities which have reputation, which have power as institutions, which have uh, power in terms of politics, in terms of everything, there is, and which have a lot of money, even after the crisis and so on, through they went through, they went through difficult times, but their uh, situation is still remarkable. This is a great uh, asset of the United States. The big asset of uh, France in this respect is an education system which, in spite of all its shortcomings, still produces some of the very top mathematicians in the world and also an uh, excellent environment, ecosystem, let's say. Life in France is sweet, people know this, and it's becoming more and more important for scientists around the world to put this idea of well-being and culture very high ranked in their priorities. Now, of course, there is a trend of emerging Asia. And when you look at the rankings for high school students, for instance, in mathematics, there is no, uh, there's no question that they are faring beautifully. Singapore, China, uh, India to some extent, but uh, Singapore, uh, China, Korea, South Korea maybe, the, the South Korea and Singapore may be the single best countries for this in terms of um, how the students do it in terms of their performances. And still, they do have their problems. The students are suffering from too intense work. It's the opposite of the situation in the United States, I, I may say. The children are suffering of too much discipline, there, so there's no, there's no perfect system. In terms of money and funding, it's very impressive that the institutions in China uh, have continuously growing budget, the science institutions in China. It's amazing. You can see some of these research institutions with budget growing by 10%, sometimes 15% each year. It's really crazy. The salaries, you can see that now a uh, top Chinese university can uh, buy back uh, a professor from the United States University with the same US salary. If you compare this with the Chinese uh, level of life, it shows you how much money they have now. On the other hand, um, China, to, to become a really strong country, has to solve several problems in mathematics. First is the quality. Now they have the quantity of papers, and it's crazy, the world has, has been swamped by uh, by papers from Chinese mathematicians, but most of it is rather low-level production. This is a big problem which doesn't contribute to the reputation of Chinese science. On the contrary, it makes people very nervous, it makes people very annoyed to see all these papers being produced that editors don't find time to handle and so on. Second uh, problem they have to deal with is the extreme reverence of the Asian student for his or her master. And again, it's the opposite problem of what there is in the United States. Respect in the, which is paid in, uh, in China to the master is too high, which may have a paralyzing influence on the research of a young researcher. He or she will not dare contradict the master, for instance. This is a problem in research in which you always have to be some kind of revolutionary in some respect. 
And um, the other big problem is um, how to set up the immigration settings. You know, a great mathematics nation has to be a, a nation of great immigration too, because immigration plays a huge role in the development of science and especially uh, theoretical science. And China is not a country of immigration. It's when you go in Chinese university, you have Chinese students, Chinese professors, Chinese researchers, and so on, a small fraction of researchers from outside. And this is one thing that China has to find a way to learn to, to become a, a really huge mathematical power. How to get the brains from around the world and not just the Chinese brains.